Evil Dead is a horror film franchise that follows the anti-hero Ash Williams, played by the legendary Bruce Campbell, as he fights to both survive soul-hungry demons as well as keep the powerful Necronomicon from falling into their twisted hands. I have a couple of Evil Dead-inspired miniatures to paint for Zombicide. The new Evil Dead video game released recently, so when will there be a better time for me to paint these? In this video, I will paint Ash and Evil Ash, or as they are known as in Zombicide Black Plague, Troy and Evil Troy. Let's jump right in. The Zombicide series is notorious for releasing survivor miniatures based on popular characters from all across film and TV. The two characters I will be painting are drawn from the third film in the Evil Dead franchise, Army of Darkness. The movie sees Ash Williams transported back in time to the Middle Ages. Zombicide's character Troy is the first miniature I will be painting, and it looks to be a depiction of Ash Williams from near the end of the movie, where he is clothed and armored to help defend Castle Kandar from the approaching army of deadites. I should mention that these miniatures have been cleaned and primed beforehand. Do not skip those two steps for these kinds of plastic models. The character artwork for Troy shows him with brown pants and a blue shirt. This resembles Ash's attire from Evil Dead 2, but by the time of Army of Darkness, his clothes are badly damaged. Ash gets a new set of clothes before he departs from the castle to seek out the Necronomicon. This new set of clothes includes black pants. I am going to side with the movie on this feature and paint the pants black. The cape looks black in the Zombicide artwork. In the movie, it looks gray and has an interesting texture. I do not know where I would begin if I were to try to recreate this texture, so I will just side with the Zombicide artwork on this detail. I will paint this cape black, but highlight it later to make it more gray. I'm painting the shoes dark brown so that they have some contrast to the adjacent pant legs. The sword, breastplate, and armor pieces on his elbows and knees get a bright silver coat of paint. This is the good guy in the story, so he gets nice shiny armor even if he is often reluctant to face down evil. The armor on the elbows and knees have straps that could do for a little brown paint. This is a tiny detail, but not an insignificant one. In my experience, I will notice if they are not painted. I almost forgot about the iconic prosthetic gauntlet. Groovy. This dark gunmetal will differentiate it from the sword it is gripping. Now it is time for a little black wash. Off camera, I carefully applied a small dot of white paint to the model's mouth so his clenched teeth are more visible. The details are really starting to come out now. The last touch is that highlight on the cape I mentioned earlier. This feature of the model is a large surface area and the highlights help break up the solid color. That is it for the first mini. Onward to this character's darker half. While on his quest to retrieve the Necronomicon, Ash encounters a dark presence that creates an evil clone of himself. He defeats the clone, but evil Ash rises again and leads the Deadites to attack Castle Kandar. The evil Troy miniature is a depiction of Ash's evil clone during this assault on the castle. The shirt is black in the Zombicide artwork and the movie, but I decided to go for the same blue I used on the other miniature. 
I plan on darkening it later with a wash. The collar of the shirt is a sneaky detail that I almost missed. Evil Ash wears the same black pants as Ash, but I like the choice of brown in the Zombicide artwork, so I went with that. Honestly, it was probably my subconscious telling me that I did not entirely like the way the black pants turned out on the other model. Painting the cloak on Evil Troy was one of the easiest decisions for me to make. In the movie, Evil Ash has a red cloak, and that is what I'm going with. It adds some much needed color to what will otherwise be a rather dark model. The colors of the shoes and pants are flipped here compared to the other model. I still want the shoes to stand out next to the pants, so I'm going to paint them black. I chose to apply a dark gunmetal paint to the metallic features of the model. He is a bad guy. The shape of the armor reflects that, and so should its color. Speaking of the armor, there's a discrepancy between the model and the artwork. In the artwork, Evil Troy is wearing this ribcage-shaped piece of armor instead of a solid breastplate. On the other hand, the miniature is depicted wearing an actual breastplate that is stylized with ridges where this ribcage pattern would be. This is a difference between the model and its reference, but not one that ruins the mini. If anything, it makes the model easier to paint. This model also has some little armor straps. These need to be painted. Now for the challenging part. In the movie, Evil Ash was shot in the face, buried, What's that you got on your face? Huh? I'll come back and then for rose you. from the grave. No! Oh, you miserable bags of bones! This resulted in the character having a brown, leathery, rotten skin that partly reminds me of a mummified corpse. I want to try and replicate this appearance. The base color of the skin is going to be this dark red brown. Later I will go over it with a lighter brown and maybe a bit of red around his mutilated mouth. I am deferring to the film for this detail, but that is not to say that I do not like the choice of bloody red skin in the Zombicide artwork. This artwork makes Evil Troy look like his skin was flayed off, leaving behind red muscle. It looks creepy and would be a great idea for another undead miniature down the road. This bone helmet is a fun detail. This will be the brightest feature of the model and will help draw attention to the character's face. A dry brushing of drab brown will complete the skin of this model. I tried to leave the lower half of the face that reddish brown to represent the buckshot wound. The evil clone of Ash has an underbite. I tried to paint a line of white on his mouth to represent his exposed lower teeth. The line went a little crooked, but it works. The character's face is all messed up, so a crooked grin seems fitting. I am opting for a darker black wash. And with that, this undead commander is done. There we have it. Good and evil the living, and the undead. I like the way these models turned out. The color choices I made for Troy are more accurate to the inspiration for the miniature, but in hindsight, I think brown pants would have looked better. I am impressed with how well the highlight took to the back of the cloak. This looks way better than a ripple of solid black or gray. I like my paint job for evil Troy more. I like how the red cloak contrasts the dark pants and armor. My favorite part is the skin coloration. That drab brown worked as a highlight to the red brown base coat and helped emphasize the sunken facial features. Also, we cannot gloss over that awesome bone helmet. You take one look at that and you know this is the bad guy. These would be fun miniatures for Dungeons and Dragons. Troy looks like he could be a heroic player character mini, 
maybe a fighter, a paladin, or possibly even a cleric. Evil Troy would be perfect for an undead, demonic, or devilish villain. Personally, I think he would be great as a knight captain sworn to serve Orcus, the demon lord of undeath. I could also picture this miniature being used as something like a white or a vampire. These are cool minis. I plan to use them in Dungeons & Dragons at some point. They will get a chuckle from those who recognize these cult classic characters. If you enjoyed the video, then leave a like. If you did not, then tell me why. If you want to see more content, then put down that Necronomicon and press the subscribe button. I have another channel called Gaming Tome Digital, where I occasionally post Let's Plays of computer games. I plan on doing a couple of videos on the new Evil Dead game over there. Take a look if that interests you. Anyways, thank you for watching. Keep making and keep playing. Have a good one.